he's just a hack. He's just an absolute hack. And he gets his ass kicked by his teammates every week. It's just, you know, it's terrible. It's just terrible. So, Sean, today it's Sunday. Uh, I'm watching the offensive lineman here at the NFL Combine. You were watching a little bit. I, I know this is a little bit of a hack take, hence the show, why people tune into the show. I have to say, and I tweeted this, I think that the most entertaining day out of any of the days, and I know everyone's ooing and aahing over Anthony Richardson. I know everyone gets excited when the defensive linemen run fast times. I still firmly believe that the offensive lineman day has to be the best day. I, I, I know that you are you might be biased and you also might hate my take, but I can't explain it. The offensive line day is just the most fun to watch because it's just all these short area drills. They're just guys cutting back and forth. It's so much more entertaining to watch those guys move than to watch the receivers or to watch the linebackers. Well, yeah, you like the freak show. That's what you like. That's uh, not so it. I'm going to break it down. It's my favorite day because I recall doing these drills poorly, uh, but I recall doing them. And I, poorly. you know, so I have uh, I, I've been yelled at and coached and I should just say coached and not yelled at. But um, I've been coached enough on these drills where I'm very aware of what you should do with your body in the drills. So I was very entertained today watching the combine and watching some of the guys move around. But you like it because you like watching uh the, the fat boys run around and then that's, that's what it. you like. You like that's you want, you like watching the freak show and no. I get it where everyone else, all the other guys, the linebackers are boring. Defensive linemen are boring. DBs are boring because they're all just carved out of stone and they're all you just know they're exceptional athletes because that they're built like an exceptional athlete. But when you see the big fella moving a little bit or you see their different variants of drills, that's why you like it. It's not the fat boys. I think that's the wrong word. It. It's fun watching the hosses, the the units move. That's, that's, that's what it is. You it's know what the unit biggest is? guys unit and on, hoss. That's what? a that's a substitute word for fat boy. No, it's not. No, because fat boy, I look at fat boy as somebody who has no athletic capability. I think it's really cool that there's guys that are this big that can move this easily. So it's like extraordinary. we got Paris, we got Paris Johnson Jr. and Matt Bergeron out here and Broderick Jones, who look like basketball players in the post the way that they're moving their feet so easily i think like that's that's fun the other aspect of it too and this is definitely a fat a fact i think is the offensive line coaches i don't know what it is that just like a separate okay i'll it, give you that i'll give you that it's kind of in line with being entertained by dads and football dads and big dad <laughs> because they're all basically football dads well, we These love just, football dads we love we love seeing just the mat the mammoths yeah, the, <laughs> it's it's fun. Did you see the Jaguars O line coach and the Eagles yes. O line coach? Yeah, I just, they were. Yeah. They, I don't know why, but it just got me so excited to watch those guys. Oh, that was bad voice. Crack. Nice. How many years have we been doing this show? It got me it's so excited. It's not different from show one with the voice cracks. That's true. It got me really juiced up, and I thought it was awesome to watch the Eagles and the Jaguars O line coaches to direct these guys through these drills, drills because they're loud. <laughs> and they're also equally as big as the guys that they're they're directing. Yeah, the Jag the Jaguars coach was uh awesome uh because he's just using the jargon that you get in the offensive line drills. Every position has their own jargon, which is which is fine, but it seems like offensive lines is the most meathead. Meathead, yes. It's is come here, give me a little more. Give me a little more. He, had, he was just chest up, chest up. Yeah, his chest up. And then he's like, Come on, take some more space, take some more space. I'm like, oh, okay, awesome. You know, it, it just watching the drills, it uh, was uh it was fun. Uh and then I was uh a couple of buddies were over just we're just sitting watching. And they're asking me about the drills. And I'm like, yeah, one day I want to be the jerk with the football motioning where they're going to go up, back, up, back. And not you the were jerk. saying that or they were saying that? No, I was saying that I instead of the jerk that was following the football and then trying to. <laughs> oh, he faked me out. Oh, I got to get back where I'm going. <laughs> oh, I'm slipping. Oh, I lost this rep. That, that's uh, how it's going. But it, they looked like they were moving pretty good. Uh, the BYU kid looked like he was moving good, but he doesn't seem he's not DeWan Jones. And that's he's not that size. De DeWan Jones is. Is kind of fool's gold, and they're they're showing him on the screen right now. I don't know. I can't it's get behind. I can't get behind him because he's not Mackay Becton. Because Mackay Becton was a freak show. The Juan Jones is just he's just big. He's just he's too big. He's how way is, too how, big. How is he tested 
compared to, and I, this is an awful question to set you up, but like versus like Orlando Brown Jr. Because he had a not thrilling combine for everybody, but he's but been a, a, a fantastic offensive lineman in the NFL. Orlando Brown Jr., though, we knew was a really good offensive lineman because he had the tape to back it up. He didn't test well and he looked sloppy. But I think that like Dewan doesn't have that same level of commitment is what concerns me. So he actually came on the NFL Draft Prospects podcast with Ryan. And I've talked in depth with Ryan about this, that Dewan Jones really kind of gave him this vibe. And it's not like he indirectly is assuming this. He basically answered some of the questions saying that football is not really something that he's super into. He's just doing it. And they showed the basketball highlights. He's more into basketball than he is to football. So I don't know, man. I think if you're an offensive lineman, you got to be like really bought in because it's the most difficult position on the field. Uh, I don't know. You can make a lot of money. Look at Andrew Whitworth. You don't think he wanted to retire but, five wait, years ago? But he kept playing, though, because for both sides. But think about all the guys, and I can't think of one off the top of my head. There's guys that have played in the league that have come into the league questioning us, questioning his level of commitment, and then it very qu- quickly showed up. And they did not have a long NFL career. Who was the dude that the Rams drafted, the St. Louis Rams drafted like 10 years back? And then he was on the Browns and then he just didn't do anything. It he was a r- really good athlete. I'm blanking on his name. Was he an offensive lineman? It was an offensive lineman. Was the, but- was the Auburn guy? It might have been the Auburn guy. It might have been the he Auburn was take, kid. taking it number three. Golly, hold on. That, that's going to bug me. But I think that, that, in my opinion, is a really good example of somebody who – if I get those vibes that, that that an offensive lineman's not into it, it's hard for me to buy into it. I think that that level of commitment is different. Was it Greg Robinson? It was Greg Robinson. That's it. I knew. Yep. Uh, round one, pick two, 2014, second overall. Because the thing that gets complicated with offensive linemen is that if you're lazy and you're not that motivated, it is such a hard position to show up every day to practice and to show up to the facility and do film and all that. I think if you're a really athletic DB or a really athletic receiver and you don't care and you're half-assing things, you can still show up and be productive and be a key part of a roster. I think that that you can get away with that for other positions. Quarterback, you can't. But offensive line, I think at the top of the list, you need to be bought in. That's the tough thing for me. There's definitely a mentality about it. I also think a lot of guys get bounced from the league because it's so hard blocking these defensive linemen like my yeah. thing my only concern with dewan jones is okay no one's going to outpower him maybe khalil mack will get him with the hump move once uh and that'll make make a tape but it's just the edge can he get around to the edge fast enough can he cover I it he I, I don't know if he can the he only thing very well did you see so how, he, he, how he was trying that to well bend. and this is not a, a this 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 is not a a uh criticism of dewan jones podcast it's just where the minds are going but I, the bend is a little worrisome, but he's also so long. I don't know if he's long enough to 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 counteract his speed. Like, oh, what? Who am I? Who am I about to? So you're talking about an edge or attack? An edge. Kind of yeah, I'm trying to. Oh, um, Jonathan Ogden with the Ravens uh, in the early 2000s of Hall of Fame tackle. He wasn't the fastest tackle, but he was so long and so strong with his hands that he could stop anybody. And, and then the NFL players would say, yeah, he was just toying with you because he was such a mammoth of a man that that it's like, OK, he's just blocking you and he, you can't go anywhere. He's laughing in your face. Uh, <laughs> and, and that that's if that's it's so hard to compare a, a 23 year old uh, athletic freak to a, a first ballot Hall of Famer. But if that's what size wise and, and dimensions wise that I'm looking at, that's what I would hope that you could be at that size. The one that they threw up on the screen was Trent Brown, and I actually agree with that one because Trent Brown hasn't been super consistent, admittedly. No. He hasn't been super consistent. He's had a couple of good years. And I actually I could kind of see that from DeWan Jones. Like I could see him being selected somewhere. He's going to get drafted on day two. It's going to yeah, happen. Trent, Trent Brown is nasty, though. He's a nasty offensive lineman. But he's freaking massive. I know. I know. He's a I know. big boy. I, I, but is he is du- nasty. Is Dewan Jones, get... Jones is Dewan Jones he's nasty? He's not. That's the thing. Is that Trent I don't even went... think you need to be that nasty, but it, that edge helps you so much at the offensive line position. It just does. Yeah. Having that that edge and saying, hey, you're not going to beat me. You know, it's the the man versus the man. All right. So 
some guys are just technicians. Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to finesse you. You're not going to get past me. Look at me. I look so sweet. I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm moving. Uh, and then, but uh, it's such a weird position where everybody has a different approach to it with character. And I feel like character that and quarterback are the two real character positions uh, that, that you're looking for in football, wide receiver, tight end, whatever, who cares? Uh, linebacker, you might want some character a guy that the wolf hunter type situation, but that character is, I think, really gets scouted out a lot for that mm-hmm. position. No, absolutely, and I think that we we get some exposure to to that this week. And not to to over talk about the offensive line stuff. I just good timing with with how fun it is, and obviously yeah. having a former offensive lineman on this show, uh, Sean. Today, though, we want to get to breaking down and talking about a little bit of the news that happened on Friday, late on Friday, with Nick Saban. And the news that I'm referring to is his reaction to the impending scheduling for the SEC. And what I'm referring to is a new scheduling system that these teams now have a locked in three rivals that they will play on a season to season basis. And then the rest of their schedule is going to rotate. Yeah. There is going to be a nine game schedule of in SEC opponents. So effectively, you've got six different opponents every year, and three that are locked in. Now, Nick Saban has complained about the fact that he has to play LSU, Tennessee, and Auburn as his three locked-in rivals. The the full quote here, and this is what we've got from Saban. I'm going to throw it up on the screen. They said they had a 10-year whatever. Well, some of those years, Tennessee wasn't as good as they've been in the previous 10 years, and now they are good as they used to be before those 10 years. We, get, we got three teams, and two of them are in the top 10, and the other is in the top 10 a lot. Look historically over a 25-year history, and the three best teams in the East are Georgia, Tennessee, and Florida. You look historically at 25 years, Alabama, LSU, and Auburn are the three best teams in the West, so we're playing them all. Look, I'm going to put this out there, and that's not the full quote. Saban's lucky they didn't give him Georgia. Yeah, what a baby. <laughs> How do you think Tennessee and, and these these school Auburn and LSU feel about having to play Alabama every year, right? The, you, w- w- you're being a baby about this. It's unbelievable. Do you are, are if if that's your approach to this, hang it up. Hang it up. All right, well, that if, might if, be a little extreme. <laughs> no, no, it's not, Joe. It's not. Because if we said when we were playing our three rivals would, would, that we would always play UNH, Villanova, and, and uh, Towson, right? Mm-hmm. Whatever. It, it's the SEC. It's the, it, it, and I know I'm comparing it to the CAA, but we had huge battles with every single one of those teams. A lot of times, they won. But it, it, it's the conference. That's right. how it works out. If those are your three biggest rivals. You can't be all about the money, all about the TV, and be pissed when people are, are trying to schedule some good games for the TV and the money. All right. I know you want to go play the Citadel every single week. C- cool. And you want to play Southern Miss. Awesome. G- good win by, by 50 points. But you can't <laughs> have your cake and eat it too in this situation. You're going to have to go play some real football if you want these big ass TV deals. Before we continue on with this video, I just want to tell you folks about an exciting new partnership that we have with this channel with Underdog Fantasy. Ever since I joined, I've been having so much fun. There are so many different exciting games that make watching games during the offseason more exciting. I'm not the biggest basketball fan, but it has made it way more entertaining since I found Underdog Fantasy. And my favorite game to play so far, which I think you should try out, is Pick'em. It is so easy to play. Just pick higher or lower on your favorite player stats, and you can win up to 20 times your money in a single night. Underdog keeps it simple. With their easy-to-use website and mobile apps, pick between two and five players to fill out your Pick'em slip Get every pick right and take home some cold, hard cash. Use code HACK, H-A-C-K, HACK, like the name of this channel. Use code HACK to get your first deposit doubled up to $100 by Underdog. Go sign up. You won't regret it. You're going to have a blast. Check out Underdog Fantasy. I also want to tell you folks about our other reoccurring sponsor that we have on this channel, that being Bet Online. BetOnline.ag, which has all the updated odds, news, and anything for sports betting. It's my go-to source for when I want to be betting specifically on games. I love betting on college basketball or the NBA. 
uh, especially again during the off season, always looking for more fun ways to be uh, focused in on some of these other sports. It's betonline.ag and use promo code believe 50 It's promo code believe 50 to get 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. Right. So that's where I take away from this is that SEC owns the dominance of our attention on a week to week basis. It always consistently has the most competitive games. And look, the reality of this is that they are setting this up and there is obvious impact in the scheduling decision making by the TV networks that own the rights to the SEC scheduling. They want the most competitive games. We're not going to lose the Iron Bowl. The Alabama, Auburn, and Alabama LSU games are always the most watched games every single year. They're huge. Some of the most watched games every every year at a minimum. And even when LSU and Auburn have been bad, those games are still very competitive and highly watched. There's a reason why they are brought up into this mix. So it comes with the territory. Alabama has been elite for the past two decades or more, however long we want to map out that timeline. The whole time Nick Saban has been there. It comes with the territory that they are required to play a more difficult schedule because they are the most focused on program in the SEC. It would be bad, bad for branding if they did not if they had a weak schedule. If they were given South Carolina and Vanderbilt like Tennessee was, that would be bad for the entertainment value of the SEC. It would, but if this happened five years ago, he wouldn't have complained because that was before LSU's championship and that was before Tennessee had this good season this past season. And Tennessee versus South Carolina, South Carolina blew their doors off this last year, so they're not a cakewalk team anyway. I know I said that they were going to be a fall off this year because they had a great year last year. Regardless, it's 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 going to be level for you, pal. Also, it it's just... Play me a sad song with the world's smallest violin. I feel so bad for you, Nick Saban. I feel so bad that you consistently have a top three recruiting class, consistently have 10 guys going to the NFL every year, consistently have an awesome program. You had a a 12-year dynasty, maybe longer, and now you're complaining that that you have some competition in your own conference? Go screw. That's so lame. That's so lame. It's lame, (sighs) right? Yeah, it is, and it sucks that the the guy who doesn't want to play Brian Kelly, he does, which is embarrassing. You don't want right. you're scared of Brian Kelly. It's and embarrassing for them, and Hugh Free. Oh my God, is that embarrassing? Are you still thinking about 2014 when 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 with with the with the kick six? Is that still in your in your head? Do you you worry that's going to happen again, or are you worried last year you lost in overtime to LSU when they weren't even LSU and Brian Kelly outcoached you? And you lost in overtime and lost your your CFP bid. Oh, but that's not going to matter so much because we're going to have a twelve team expansion. So how how uh, to the college football playoff? So how worried should you really be? Right, I, I would actually argue. Now that the the playoff is expanding, you win two of those games. All you need to do is win two of those games, not even all three. Two of those games, and you're locked into playing in the playoff. You're guaranteed to go to the playoff if you win two of those matchups. Because as he highlighted. Now that Josh Heupel has redirected Tennessee and they are more competitive, we do not know for a fact that the the future of Tennessee is going to be as good as it looked last year. Who knows? But the main point is that if you win two of those games and you finish the season with one or two losses, Nick, your losses might and will probably be against the hardest games on your schedule. You will go to the playoff. You bitched and moaned and did your whole press tour Oh, at the God. end of the year, on during these to championship games, you would have gotten in. Get in. You would have gotten in in twenty twenty four. You would have, but you didn't uh, get in this year. And guess what? If you did, you would have gotten the doors blown off by Georgia. I will say, looking at this though, I, Tennessee, without a doubt, I have the graphic pulled up. I should have sent it to you. Tennessee got the lightest lineup, so they play Vanderbilt, Alabama. And South Carolina. I actually will admit, Saban doesn't have room to complain, but I think every SEC team should be annoyed that that is the lineup that Tennessee got. Like, give them someone a little harder, like Arkansas, maybe. But I know, but you have to go at Tennessee. You have to do one in school, in state. I would say Tennessee and Vanderbilt, uh, both Tennessee schools. It, it's not great, and I. It, it's not great, but. You gotta give. You gotta have some rivalries for the bottom team. Mizzou's got to have a couple rivalry games, right? 
Mizzou's got Arkansas. Oklahoma's actually a sneaky rivalry for them and Vanderbilt. So Mizzou's got an easy one, but Mizzou stinks. So it's like, who cares? They're probably going to lose all three of those games or at least two of them anyways. So it doesn't even matter. How was Tennessee done against Alabama in the last five years, by the way? Not good. That remember, was the first time they won. Many, I don't remember many Tennessee just upset Alabama, and that's going to take the – no, it's, oh, Alabama just beat Tennessee, and they're going to go to the college football playoff, and they have – But that was before here, Josh Heupel, though. That I know was it was. Heupel I know it up. was. I know. But <sighs> Tennessee's my team. How, how confident am I this upcoming year, Joe, that Tennessee is going to be in the top four? Not very. I'm trying to see who else has, has like a really easy lineup. Everyone else, actually, I will admit, has very good parity for the rivals that they were handed. Like I, I think that every the only two in my eyes that I think look very lopsided are Missouri and Tennessee. Because, like, I for example, I look at a team like Texas who has Oklahoma, Texas A and M, which are tough matchups, and those are two legit real rivals that can't get removed because they've had at one point long-standing rivalries with both yeah. those teams. And now we're getting back the Texas A&M Texas rivalry. And they've also had pretty good fights with Arkansas over the past few years. So I'm glad yeah, that Arkansas but, but, is all in three there. of those teams are B tier in the SEC. They're all B tier. But Te- that's Oklahoma, all I'm looking for. Oklahoma stunk. Texas A&M stunk last year. Texas was okay and, and Arkansas was was okay. So that's a good that's a good little pack of rivalries for them. I think that Tennessee, I don't think that they have a, a lot they got Vanderbilt. Okay. Cry me a river that, that Vanderbilt wasn't in Kentucky. They got two F's and an A with theirs. South that's Carolina beat them by sixty last year. And then beat them by sixty, but that's on a consistent. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot the actual number because I couldn't count the amount of fireworks they're going out of the sky because they had didn't have any more because they scored so many touchdowns on them. On a consistent basis, though, South Carolina is going to get their asses kicked by Tennessee. Let's Beamer be has changed. Beamer is no, doing to hasn't. South Carolina no, what Heupel has, has done at no, Tennessee. No, yes, he has. No, yes, he has. stop Who it. Who won last year? Stop it. Who won their stop matchup it. last it's year? It's one game that they won. It's one it was, game that they won. It was a huge game. This is game why I won. went on, uh, on Blake and I's show. This is why when we did our most overrated coaches list, I brought up Shane Beamer because there are – Hacks like you who get all juiced up over Shane Beamer. Oh, Shane Beamer beat Clemson in Tennessee. Is that oh, an impression look, of me? Look that's, at this. That's, 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 that's your Sean Anderson impression? It's the, it's the hack impression. It's the, oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at Shane Beamer. Special teams. Look at Tell how me good it he wasn't looks. the most impressive season they've had in recent memory this past year. Tell me it, it wasn't. Tell me they didn't have season. bigger wins this year than, they, than you could remember. Sucked. Notre Dame sucked, and Tyler Buckner threw three freaking picks, and they couldn't beat him. Recruit better. But that's the point, Dude, is that they no, lost okay. all their recruits. You can't say that. Lo- you can't, you can't, give, me, you can't give me a Notre Dame portal. argument because Notre Dame was an enigma last year. Notre, Notre Dame stunk. didn't know what Notre they were. Dame they stunk early. But Notre Dame, and I know this because I know you, Notre Dame fans will wins. They will wins with their fake humility. Stop. And they say, oh, we stink this year when you're still a good team. Notre Dame beat them with a quarterback who threw three interceptions and couldn't complete a pass. They couldn't yeah. move the ball down the field. Yeah, and DJU also put up 50 points in an overtime win versus Wake Forest, okay? Bad quarterbacks can have decent games. J.J. McCarthy took Michigan but to the CFP. But Buckner didn't have a decent game. My point is that the they, they lost that game because of bad coaching. Shane Beamer is not a good coach for the millionth time. I, who would you rather most- have as a coach, Marcus Freeman or Shane Beamer? Marcus Freeman. Are you kidding me? You just said that Notre Dame was a bad team. They're, they were a bad team last year. Yo, so you're team hopeful this year. A little more hope, and not really. I mean, they're, yeah. They're, yeah. They're, yeah. Uh, who do you think is more hopeful? Jared Parker South Carolina stink. fans or Notre Dame fans? South Carolina fans because they're delusional and Notre Dame mm. fans are realists. I don't think so. I think people are uh, in South Carolina are sitting no. here drunk and watching the game saying, oh, this team's scoring a lot of points. This team's playing hard. The Which they reason, were. The only reason why I know that you know that is because you live with somebody who went to South Carolina. No, do you live with the person? No, who went to I South don't. Carolina? He, he's you're your friend. But I went down there. It's a lawless area. Yeah. Uh, but regardless, it's it's got a good talent pool, and they recruit athletic freaks. And South Carolina now they have a coach that seems to have a little bit of 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 pull with the team. I we got to mm-hmm. say right now. 
South Carolina seems a little more composed than other the top 10 uh, top SEC schools with how their programs are running. Wait, how Alabama's so? having some issues. Georgia's having some issues. I'm not worried about South Carolina. Yeah, because right South Carolina is never going to be in the spotlight. But well, that that's all semantics. What are we that, arguing about? What are we I don't know. The, the last point. Oh, though, oh that yeah, I, Tennessee. No, it's not even. No, no. I don't think Tennessee's weighted poorly. I don't think they have a cupcake schedule at all for the rivalries. They don't have a cupcake. No, schedule? it's not cupcake. It's unfortunate Stop. for everyone else that, that it's no, Stop. it's unfortunate. dude, no. dude, dude, dude. How how are we gonna blame the the fact that Vanderbilt is also in the state of Tennessee? George has been playing Georgia it's, Tech for the last 50 years and blowing their backs out. Because that's that's an actual rivalry. The Tennessee Vanderbilt one is not a, a you usual have, Do you rivalry. understand how in-state works? I understand how it works, but it doesn't most, seem like it. Most people would say that Alabama is a much bigger rival than Tennessee and Vanderbilt are. I understand. But it's still same state. You got to throw a same state in there. Besides the point, the one thing I will say, though, Sean, separate from the groaning by Saban, I th- don't actually like this scheduling system oh, for the nine game scheduling system. I like the proposed idea, which I don't think we're going to get. The originally proposed idea was to do a pod system, kind of like with the way that we get with the World Cup and whatnot, where I think that there should Terrible. be. There's, but there should be miniature divisions where you play your division That's every terrible. single year, and then you should rotate your schedule of playing a different division every single year. Like so the we're NFL, have the SEC, A, A, B, C, and D. It's terrible. Terrible. Why is idea. it terrible? I think that because I, I. What do you want to be? You want to be the World Cup? You want to be the NFL? Or do you want to be college football? A tradition I, that people uh, beat the beat each other over the heads for. I How want, much do you want to change this sport? I'm not trying to change the sport. I just want more schedule diversity where we don't go long periods of time without playing other opponents. And I think the setup of kind of way the NFL does it where, you know, the, the NFC East is playing the NFC South this year. The NFC West is playing the NFC North this year. I want that that style of structure because we're not required to do the whole home and home thing. We're not required to to, to meet those standards. It's a lot more frequently playing the same opponents in the conference. I would like to consistently see uh, Texas play Alabama every couple of years. I want to see Georgia play Alabama every couple of years. I don't want it to be five, six years in between when they face each other. It's stupid and it won't matter. You know why? Because the only thing that's going to matter is the top uh, 12 teams. And that's the only games you're going to want to see. And you're really only going to want to see four of those games. Okay. Okay. No one, you, you, you're going to get this. You're going to get this in the expanded college football playoff. All right. You're trying to fix an issue that, that if I'm we didn't get to the expanded. I'm not an issue. Dude. I'm just, I would like to have more consistently playing every single team in the conference. That's all I want. I would like every team to play one another as often as possible. And I think by restricting yourself. You know what that happens also? That gives what? you more uh, Georgia, Kentucky. It gives you more. You want to watch? You're thrilled to watch LSU, Mizzou. Is that what you but, want to do? But Give that, me the best games. But Pod the, system's stupid. We didn't get to. For here's a really good example: is that this year, I would have loved to have seen Alabama play Georgia during the regular season. Uh, some might argue that Alabama could have sneakily beaten Georgia or snuck up on you them because point that person out to me, and I'll point that's out that's me. IQ. That's me. I low. believe that that they have the kryptonite low to IQ defeat take. Georgia. It's not a low IQ take. Skill issue. You stink. Uh, final points before we wrap up, Sean. <laughs> uh, I, I, oh, it's, so what happened? Sean won the argument, and now the show's over? You didn't win the argument. It was just we're coming up on time. What are you? You don't have more time for me? No, I, the, the scheduling structure of where the show fits is, is – Can you stop debating me? Can you producer stop Joe debating stinks. me? I, I like Joe host. I don't like Joe producer. Uh, well, maybe I'd do less producing if you did more of it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm too busy carrying the show with my it, oh, awesome yeah. takes. That's not how that works. <laughs> All right. That's the, that's the closeout at Joe Dillion at Sanderson radio. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We will be back. I think the idea is to kind of shift to this, this current schedule and see if Sean can stick to it. Yeah. I know I can. 
I don't know if Sean can. Thanks well, for it's getting in. warm, so bowling is slowing down. Well, good. Are you not going to go play bocce? <laughs> All right, everybody enjoy the rest of your week. Hit subscribe. We'll, we'll be back with more.